Aaron Tuttle here. It's storm season in Oklahoma, and with that comes torrential rain, high winds, and hail. To protect your home and your family from these threats, the one roofing company you should trust is Ferguson Roof Systems. They've been providing the best in roofing services for nearly half a century. Ferguson is Oklahoma's full service roofing company, certified with an A plus Better Business Bureau rating and a five star rating on Google. And with Ferguson now offering class four impact resistant shingles, now is the time to trust them with your home's roof. Get started today at fergusonroofsystems.com. Hey there, meteorologist Aaron Tuttle back with you again. It is lunchtime on your Friday, a couple minutes here before noon. We're going to talk about your tornado risk for today here across Oklahoma and up north into Kansas and Nebraska. So thanks for joining me. Make sure you like and share this video. Tell your friends and family about me. This will be a very quick and short uh, forecast, of course, because most of you got some lunch plans, right? You're probably ready to rush out the door, so I'm not going to waste your time. Because I don't like my time wasted. I'm sure you don't like your time wasted. But you've come to the right place to get the real deal. All right, so out there currently, we do have, um, if you noticed, a little bit of moisture out there in the form of some cloud cover. So otherwise, it looks like a nice day, right? We're almost at 80 degrees already. So we've been kind of teetering in the upper 70s here um, on my weather station. And if we look elsewhere across the state, we're kind of also kind of holding into the mid to upper 70s across the I-35 corridor, a little cooler to the east, and then of course a little warmer to the west. Matter of fact, we've already got some 90s working in. And this warmer, hotter air is going to travel to the east today. And that's going to be one of the factors at uh, trying to break the cap in the atmosphere along the dry line. So we can see that dry line starting to take shape. We have that southwest wind coming in around 20 to 30 miles per hour with higher gusts. And we kind of have a south-southeast wind on this side as well. So what happens is we split the air mass in between. This is end up the dry, and this would be the moist. And that's what we call the dry line. So that's what's going to be setting up here for today. Obviously, it is another windy day today. Uh, unfortunately, the wind gusts continue up around 40 miles per hour. But hey, at least it doesn't feel like 50 or 60, right? So I guess baby steps. The uh, outlook from the uh, Storm Prediction Center brings the severe weather risk all the way from Oklahoma all the way into northern Nebraska with the highlighted areas, the most favored region for severe weather across southeast Nebraska near the surface low in the Kansas. And that, of course, back builds into Oklahoma. The tornado risk, 15% shaded, which means they do expect some significant tornadoes in that area and also a pretty good probability. Even though it doesn't sound like a lot, 15% and the colors, you know, you're like, well, isn't that a low probability? Yeah, I mean, it is, but that's because you will never get 100% probability of tornadoes everywhere. This is all seeing a tornado within a certain grid point. Um, so that's why the numbers are always lower. Just factor the full point is, the brighter the colors seems to be, the stronger the trend, right? Okay, so here's a look at the severe weather potential here in Oklahoma. We do have the moderate risk, or excuse me, enhanced risk that extends here in northern Oklahoma. Comes in close to the metro, otherwise a slight risk for the body of the state. All three checks out. Tornado potential, hail to baseball size, winds up around 80 miles per hour. And really, um, I'm going to show you another map here in a second. But first, uh, Tulsa, um, same thing for you guys. Your biggest threat of severe weather being the northwestern part of your region. So north of Tulsa, to Bartlesville, to Osage, Pawnee County, Stillwater. Um, otherwise, the threat is lessened and weaker as you go south into the yellow and then the green. So that's, some, I guess, some good news. At least you're not underneath a big area. Uh, if we do look at the tornado potential, again, medium. But honestly, I'm going to be level with you here. This really could be drawn something like this. And the reason for that is if we get a storm here, here, and here that breaks the cap, Either one of these are going to produce a tornado in this area. So if they go, they're going to produce a tornado along this I-35 corridor. So that, don't let that mislead you. That's just a probability level because the probability is higher that the storms will break in northern Oklahoma on the cap um, than they are in southern Oklahoma. Temperatures out there this afternoon, scorcher, 90 degrees in Enid, Lawton, Elk City, about 84 here officially at Will Rogers Airport, 79 in Tulsa. So that's another reason why things ought to be a little bit better in this region. You're going to stay a little cooler, and that's a little bit more stable for those storms as they work their way in from central Oklahoma. Oklahoma to this region, they'll start to fall apart. Once they get to this area right about here, they won't be nearly as strong as they were. And so that helps to limit the tornado potential, etc. All right, well, here's a look at where the dry line should set up according to the high res models that we have right now in our place. So go something like this with a southwest wind ahead of it and a due south wind on this side. If we had more of a southeasterly wind, we would have a lot more storms today. But the fact we only have minimal convergence, that just kind of means just a couple of spots should break along the dry line here across uh, central Oklahoma. Now we look at the instability. It runs all the way from North Texas through Oklahoma on into Nebraska as we talked about. So any of this area is favored 
for severe weather, but you have to have a kicker. You have to have other things that happen. So yes, no problem. Yes, no problem. Hmm, question down here. We have a problem and then nothing down here in Texas, just too, too capped in the atmosphere. And we talked about the cap last night and I'll, I'll cut a, a uh, description video of that and post it later so you can see what that's all about. Uh, I'll give you a little visual of it. Uh, let's see, depending on which model I pick, doesn't matter. The chord of instability is very narrow. Uh, so that's why I was saying once they kind of get east of this region, they will start to fall apart, just like they did that Saturday uh, about a week ago. All right, now, is the cap going to break? Well, the, all the models pretty much say they will. Very few don't. So you can look at that here in the colors. You see where these values in the white or gray, right around minus 10 to almost zero, uh, maybe as high as minus 20. There, there you go. There's nothing here. So again, this means no cap, where you see the colors that represents a cap. So there's one model there with all the colors to the east. It means you're capped in Tulsa Point South and East. Here's one that has no cap in central Oklahoma or east central Kansas or central Kansas. Here's another one. No cap. Here's another one. It has spots of a cap, otherwise very limited. Uh, this one has no cap where the dry line is situated, but otherwise a nice cap east of it. Um, and it does, in this case, these are indicative of storms firing along the dry line. These little guys right here. And then finally, this guy here. No cap. So they all pretty much are unanimous that there's not going to be a cap on the dry line but they don't all produce severe weather due to the different phys physics that they use. And it's really sad that we can't get models these days that still, they know there's not gonna be a cap, but they still won't produce storms. It's just strange to me. But anyway, here's a look at five o'clock in the afternoon. Um, storms uh, developing out here into uh, Southern Kansas near Wichita. These will be tornadic, hail, wind. And then down here in Lawton, uh, Wichita Falls, this little area right here, if we can get hot enough, uh, it has to be really hot, uh, we could break the cap in this region. They would move north and east as well. Um, and then there's the model also fires off a storm here in Canadian County, right here that moves through the metro. Now, all of these weaken very rapidly. Why? Because they run into the cap once we hit into the 6 and 7 o'clock hour. I think that's a little overdone. It won't be that fast. They won't die down that fast. But the take home is that they will weaken with time once they get into that less favorable environment. So that was a three kilometer name. If we look up north and some of the other CAM models, the convective um, initiation models, if we look here, this one's got a string of, of supercells just north of Oklahoma in a southern Kansas. There's four of them there. That's, that's an example. The herd does nothing. It's our best high resolution model, and it, does, it doesn't even produce any storms. It's just sad. It tries, and then it just fails. The fact that it tried, though, tells me it's going to happen. Uh, here's another convective model and a allowable model, and it also shows nice supercells across Kansas. Um, here's another one here, some supercells in Kansas, and then some here in Oklahoma, central, and then down southwest. Uh, and here's another one there we talked about. It's got the two there. And then finally, this model is also a high resolution. It's been around for a while. It doesn't do anything at all. So now, compared to last night, we actually have at least a handful of models that actually think it's going to storm, whereas most of them didn't for the longest time. And that's where you have to use old school meteorology and go against them and then let them catch up. So here's a look at the tornado parameter, the significant tornado parameter. You notice how those colors get brighter? That means parameters increase as we head into the early evening hours. So through about seven o'clock, eight o'clock kind of a deal. Uh, it may be even nine o'clock. Now the problem is storms at this point in time are gonna be running into a cap. So even though these parameters go up for more ruthless, dangerous type traumatic storms, the cap builds as well, which helps to eliminate that. So it's a balance in the atmosphere. There's always a balance in the atmosphere. There's, there's a yin and a yang. Temperatures out there today, upper 70s, around 80 on, uh, excuse me, around, yeah, upper 70s east, mid 80s central, and then near 90 or so west. But then tomorrow, much better. Again, we're in the upper 70s. So it was a great Saturday. Get out there and enjoy it. Beautiful weather. Sunday, actually, probably most of the day is pretty decent. We'll look for some storm activity. Um, might, might be returning, especially southwest, maybe parts of the state. I'll take a look at that later. Also on Monday, there's an opportunity for a couple of storms in this week, but I want you to the take home here is as long as you can see temperatures in the 70s for daytime highs and overnight lows in the 50s, that means A, you don't have a whole lot of deep moisture to work with, and B, you don't have a lot of heat and instability to work with. So both of those combinations should help to limit uh, severe weather um, aspects of things as we go through time. So that is your quick and dirty. About That was done in about, what, six minutes? So not bad. <laughs> I had, I had some requests to do things a little faster as far as getting cut into the chase. We did that. Uh, I will spend another three minutes, four minutes here if you want to hang. Uh, we're going to tell you some of the things I'm looking at, why I think the cap will break, look at some soundings. Uh, the rest of you, if you got to get, go ahead, enjoy your lunch, and thanks for stopping by. Make sure you uh, check in with me later this evening. We'll be uh, doing some live streaming. Uh, if you haven't uh, been notified on Facebook or you're having trouble, 
make sure that you opt in. I just posted the link, especially when I go live for covering tornadoes. You don't want to miss that. Sometimes Facebook is late to the party. It doesn't tell you at all or tells you late. You can click that, and you're going to hear it directly from me so that way you don't miss anything. Um, so no excuse. No more late to the party, all right? I don't want any more of those LTTPs in my comment section. If you're LTTP, wait, which, which L is it? Because i got to go backwards. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'm the L. All right, they'll be the L. All right, so let me see. Let's go into the, some of the details now before I uh, turn the rescue loose. Let's look on the detailed side if you want to know about some of the meteorology and behind the scenes, actually, why things are going to occur. We have the upper-level storm system up here across Colorado. Here's the center of it. Actually, it's kind of a dual center. It's an elongated mess. In other words, there's a lot of just spinning and vorticity rotating around here, indicated by the colors. The big take-home, though, is we have a very nice trough axis. This is a shortwave trough embedded within this upper level low, kicking through. This is strong, by the way. These little kinks, this indicates very strong lift in the middle levels of the atmosphere. So that's going to help to work on the cap strength. If we look down below, we obviously have a lot of vertical velocity or lift along the dry line. Um, and that's this little region here. And so that helps to break the cap as well. Good lift along the dry line. Uh, let's see, what else did I have here I want to show you? Um, let's go upstairs in the wind field. At 500 millibars, we have this very nice uh, the trough axis with the nice speed max associated with it, 50 knots, right here across central Oklahoma. So again, this wind speed trough is also a good kicker to get storms to develop. Then with 850 millibars, yeah, you have your strong southerly jet that comes in, pipes in all that moisture. So that's on the docket. 700 millibar temperatures. We have this little batch of cooler readings this outline right here for you, this little region right here. This is a cap breaker. Um, if uh, we drop down around, I think it was eight degrees of the coldest, whereas you're 10 degrees out on either side. 10 degrees is a good temperature to be at for a cap. In other words, the cap holds the atmosphere in check, no storms develop. Once you start to cool it down by a couple of degrees like this, you better watch some other indices because you might get some storms. And that's what we have here for today. All right, if we also look at the 850 millibar, uh, let's see, let's go to, Let's do this one here. And then we'll back up to this guy here. All right, so this particular case, here's the dry line on the really hot temperatures out here in the west, 26 degrees Celsius. But once you get in the dry line circulation on the east side where the moisture is, it drops down around 19, 18 degrees. So in other words, we're cooling the atmosphere in this layer. So what does that look like? Um, Oh, I showed you a forecast sign. I did a good explanation about this the other day. Some of you have already seen it. What I'm going to do is I'll, I'll show you a forecast sign here in a minute of um, what also I think is important. And we can do that using a couple of these other maps. So let me do that as well. All right, so this is a look at the moisture coming in. Now, the really good instability for the, the humidity values and the high dew points in the 70s, those are down into Texas. So we still don't have a severe weather setup where we've got dew points in the low 70s. Honestly, if you really want um, the, the worst of the worst, you need 70s for dew points. We can kind of get some stuff in the 60s every now and then, um, you know, but if you really want, you know, the juice, you got to get the juice. And we just don't have it so far, which is great. I'm not, a, not having a problem with that at all. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to look here at the uh, convergence. This is the uh, dry line setup here again late this afternoon. And moisture is pooling here into central Oklahoma. So I'll pick a dew point of 65 here over Oklahoma County. So right here in Oklahoma City, just kind of give you an idea of what the forecast uh, sounding looks like at 5 o'clock this afternoon. So what we have is a south wind that turns around to directional to a westerly flow. So that's 90 degrees of turning of shear in the atmosphere. That gives you a nice hodograph, hodograph look to it. Um, classic supercell structure, possible hazard type of a tornado. Down here in the um, prediction is how strong could this tornado be given the environment. EF2, EF3, so there's a lot of that agreement. Significant hail anywhere from 2 to 3 to 4 inches in diameter, going back in the analog data. Uh, let's see, what do we have here? The convective temperature says 86 degrees. In other words, you can't break the cap until you hit 86. Well, it's got the forecast for us hitting 84. That's just two degrees shy. Now, in theory, now if it's just uh, any other day, you don't break the cap at that. It's two degrees too little, too late. But if you have a convergence line, such as a dry line or maybe a, a weak front, something to get the winds to come together, they have to go up. That aids along with that heat to break the cap. And that's why you'll probably end up doing that this afternoon. Um, so I am thinking that the cap will break in a couple of areas along the dry line uh, for northern Oklahoma, stretching down to central. 
And yeah, there's a slim possibility in southwest Oklahoma that something can go down there. Sometimes that does happen. Uh, shear also around 286 meters per second square, which means the rotation will be there with any storm. Initially, when they first develop at 4.30 or 5 o'clock in that time frame, they'll be high-based. Um, but as they kind of travel eastward and the moisture gets a little bit better as we get towards 6 o'clock, um, the cloud bases will come down. The probability of a tornado will go up um, with that. You, um, so that's that's something that happened. But it's a sweet spot. You know, it's like a 6 to 7, you know, eight o'clock window if they're still going. Then it kind of dies out because the cat builds in. So there's usually a very short window of time to work with when you're talking about this kind of stuff. All right, I think that was about the last thing I wanted to bring to your attention because otherwise I'm out of time. I could talk about other things, but you get the gist uh, and that should be enough to get you going through the rest of the day. So just make sure you have a game plan. Make sure you know where to go whenever storms do fire up. And if they do produce a tornado that does head your direction, uh, make sure you got a no weather radio enabled. Turn that thing on. Make sure you got my weather app, AT's weather to go It predicts tornadoes 15 minutes in advance before they even develop. You're going, what? Yeah, it's predictive technology. It's AI. So use that. Um, to your advantage. That way you can, uh, once you get that trigger, it'll say twisting storm alert. It'll give you a BTI number from scale of zero to 10. If it's around around a four or five, you better watch it close and start getting ready to kind of get in the shelter. If it's a six or higher, just get into the shelter. Don't even wait. Because as that number goes up, the probability of it actually dropping the tornado in your direction goes up too. So pay attention to those numbers. If it's low, you know, one, two, three, just watch it, just be aware. Um, good time to turn on uh, my stream. I'll be on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook here this evening, broadcasting live coverage of these storms. I'll let you know exactly where they're going. I kind of did it like I did last time. That's about it for me. I got to get out of here. You guys have a great rest of your day. Um, that's all. I hope the cap just holds. I don't think it will, but we'll double cross our fingers. If you live up in Kansas, uh, central to east side from Wichita, and the eastern, basically eastern, almost half, really the eastern third of Kansas. You're going to have a couple of traumatic supercells in your area up toward uh, southeastern Nebraska. It's just They're just easier to go up there because there's not much of a cap. All right, that's it for me. I'm out. You guys have a great rest of your day. Thanks for following, and we'll talk soon.